They bought it. Okay, I'm being annoying. We are at an undisclosed new location. We are in my kitchen. We are also in my bedroom. We're in the living room too. And the dining room, but we are not in the bathroom. That's a great sign, right? Hey you guys, what is up? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, what's good? My name's Chanel. I like to watch movies. I like to watch them with my filmmaker thinking cap on. I like to call out what I see. It gets fun. I just love the movies. So that's all you need to know if you are new here. Thank you for joining me here today. We are like in the most insane flight path I've ever been in in my entire life. I mean, I'm used to planes, but these are like low flying planes real close to me. So it's gonna sound like a fighter jet. It's like you guys will be in shock when you hear this, listen. So you just need to know about that. And we're just gonna try to get this done before my neighbor gets on the phone, which already might be happening. So today's film is Ferris Bueller's Day Off from 1986. I was really excited to do this one because I want to get back on my John Hughes train. I just miss the man. I miss him. I miss the corny, fun, John Hughesiness of a John Hughes film. I want to get right back to Chicago. This was the movie that was wheeled into class in high school as our like rainy day film. I'm pretty sure. So I think I've seen the opening and I, I don't remember it really, but I, I think I remember he's in the shower at some point and he talks to the camera a lot, which is super exciting. I love a fourth wall break, break, break. And I feel like this movie was parodied a little bit in Easy A, which is that Emma Stone movie, which is so good. But get me back to Chicago. Get me into some quirky, fun screenplays, some quirky weirdo family. I'm just ready. I'm ready for the sound effects. I'm just ready. So this is written and directed by John Hughes, which is like, and just puts me in a good mood already. Let's see. Oh my God, Jennifer Grey's in this? Okay, that's cool. I'm gonna stop looking so I can be surprised. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm done with my disclaimers. Like I don't, I know that Ferris Bueller goes and has a day off. And I know at one point he talks to the camera. Before we continue on with our watch, I have to let you guys know that today's video is sponsored. Ah. I wanna say thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Surfshark is a VPN provider, which stands for Virtual Privacy Network. I did not know that. I didn't know that until like last week sometime. Surfshark protects you and your identity. That means no annoying ads and no annoying commercial targeting specifically, which I know we can all relate to that. I, I, I know, because I know we've all Googled something weird. And I'm not admitting to anything here, but I'm just saying. That's universal, right? I am using Surfshark right now as a browser extension and as an app on my phone. I have it pinned to my toolbar, which is amazing. You go to clean web, you click that baby on, and it will block ads, trackers, and malware from harming your computer and just making your time online a real bummer. Protecting your online identity is important, but let's face it, what's more important is that we can watch movies. Yes, that is why my absolute favorite part about Surfshark is it allows you to place your computer anywhere in the world. I used to think that you had to be some hacker girl to access Netflix in another country. Turns out you can just do that with Surfshark. You go to the browser extension, you change your server location, boom, you're in Netflix Canada. That's a huge game changer for me on the channel because I've purchased movies before when I couldn't find them streaming in the US and now I can check other countries before I go ahead and buy. And in fact, today's movie, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, is not streaming on Netflix in the US, but it is streaming on Netflix Canada. Use the link in my description box below and use code CHANEL for 83% off and three months free when you sign up for Surfshark annual subscription and you can try Surfshark absolutely risk-free for 30 whole days. I checked it out, you sign up, and if you're not totally psyched, you just cancel within the 30 days, and boom, Surfshark doesn't charge you for their services. I know you're gonna love it, so check it out. And without further ado, let's get right into today's watch, which is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It is a beautiful day in Chicago to the Chicago! Bob! <laughs> oh, it's Ferris. What? What's wrong? What's wrong? For Christ's sake, look at him, honey. Ferris? What's the matter, Ferris? Papa? Tim, they're cold and clammy. 
Papa. <laughs> I want to go to a good college so I can have a fruitful life. Annie, you're not going to school like this now. Oh, fine. What's this? What's his problem? Who's this? His sister? Jeannie? Yes, Jennifer Gray. I can't see her. that far. I love her so much. Jeannie? Jeannie, I... <laughs> you have your health. Be thankful. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you have your health. Be thankful. Guys, this is a world-class stay-home-from-school performance. The office will know just where I am if you need me, okay? Casting by Janet Hurchinson and Jane Jenkins. This is the most amazing dynamic duo from... Princess Bride. I'll be home at six sharp. If you need anything. I'm fairly curious. What is your go-to move to stay home from school? If you care to share, share. They bought it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too good. That is too Incredible. good. Incredible. <laughs> hey, you're such a little asshole. How could I possibly be expected to handle school on a day like this? Oh, this is one of those airplanes, you guys. Let's pause. I feel like while we're paused, let's just say that I love the quirk factor of John Hughes' film. I think this is the exact kind of movie I would want to make. Um, I don't think I have like the cleverness or the smarts to do something really wordplay-y and fun. Like, like I love A Clue and I love Princess Bride's like wordplay and comedy writing, but I think that this is way more in my wheelhouse. This is in my groove and this kind of movie speaks to me. It's it's fun. It is so much fun. Um, if you just take notice, John Hughes's camera angles are really funny. Um, they are perfectly comedic. Like, they have that from the bed point of view shot looking up at mom and dad as they're like, is he okay? Which is really comedic, I find. And they have that point of view shot um, looking up at sis the sister as she's like, I can't believe it. And then to break the fourth wall and then go, they bought it is, it's really cool to me. I think this is like everything I kind of love. So, yeah, we're kind of like right in my pocket right now. Okay, let's go back in. This is my ninth sick day this semester. Oh, nine? Bro. Only fever is a deadlock, but uh, you get a nervous mother, you could wind up in oh, a doctor's no. office. Yeah, you don't want a fever. It's a little childish and stupid, but then so is high school. <laughs> then again, so is high school. That wasn't bullshit. It's on European socialism. I mean, really. This is the shot from Easy A that they parody. Wow. I don't believe in Beatles. I just believe in me. Good point there. I love it. I feel like it's like perfectly apathetic. Does that make sense? Adams. Here. Bueller. Adam Lee. Here. Hello. Cameron babe, what's happening? Cameron babe. Where are you? I'm taking the day off. Now get dressed and come on over. You can't stupid, I'm sick. This friend's like rich or something? This production design of the friend's house is really different. It's like very high tech. Can't be wound up this tight and go to college. His roommate will kill him. When Cameron was in Egypt's land. Let my people go. My Cameron go. Wow, Easy A really took a lot from this film. That if you stuck a lump of coal up his ass, in two weeks you'd have a diamond. Are you also aware, Mrs. Bueller, that Ferris does not have what we... That woman looks familiar. Is she in planes, trains, and automobiles, maybe? ...number of school days. In the opinion of this educator, Ferris is not taking his academic growth seriously. I asked for a car, I got a computer. How's that for being born under a bad sign? I played clarinet. Sucked at it. Never had one lesson. Never had one lesson is an easy A. Wow, we need to do like a video essay. Anyone raised or lowered? Anyone? Anyone? This is culturally huge. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Voodoo economics. I love the cross cutting. He's such a little asshole in the best way. <laughs> Do I sound like I'm kidding? <coughs> Who's he talking to? Ferris Bueller, do you know him? Think you'll be alive this weekend? Oh, this is this heightened reality that I obs I'm obsessed with. Well, makes you look like an ass is what he does, Ed. Thank you, Grace. Eeks, sluts, bloods, wastoids, dweebies, dickheads. 
They all adore him. They think he's a righteous dude. <laughs> all of those things coming out of her mouth. It's, oh, it's perfect. Oh, great. Keep me out of it. If you're not over here in 15 minutes, you can find a new best friend. You've been saying that since the fifth grade. Harris Bueller's kind of an asshole, right? We agree. 20 bucks says he's sitting in his car debating about whether or not he should go out. <laughs> Prison! This is so cool too, because when you would stay home from school, this is what you would picture. Like you would picture, you would look at the clock and you'd be like, I wonder what my friends are doing right now. And then we're getting to see it. Like they're taking us there. Uh, Sloan Peterson. May I have a word with you, dear? Your grandmother has just passed. Faking. Yeah, you, uh, you, you just produce a corpse and uh, I'll release Sloan. I want to see this dead grandmother firsthand. Ed Rooney's office. Hi, this is Ferris Bueller. Can I speak to Mr. Rooney, please? Uh, oh, amazing comedic setup. Tell amazing. you what, Dip. Ferris Bueller's online, too. The 1961 Ferrari 250 GT. Whatever miles we put on, we'll take off. How? Oh. Drive home backwards. Is that? That's not a thing, right? Oh, Sloan, dear. I guess that's my dad. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta go. What a freaking G. Do you have a kiss for daddy? Are you kidding? Not hmm. in front of the principal. What the f Do you have a kiss for daddy? At least it's like nervous. Yeah, I'm excited. I want to see Chicago. Save Ferris. Save Ferris. <laughs> Save Ferris Bueller? Save Ferris. Save Ferris. We're collecting money to buy Ferris Bueller a new kidney. They run about 50 G's or so, so if you could help out. Go piss up a flagpole. Piss up a flagpole. You heartless wench! Oh my god, how many of these lines did you use in your family? You heartless wench. Grace, Ferris Bueller's behind this. There is no doubt in my mind. And now he's got Sloan Peterson involved in this. Her grandmother, too. You pinhead. You need to reach us. We'll be at the following number. This is an elaborate lie. I'm gonna give the guy a fiver to watch. Look at Good choice, that guy. I'm a professional. Shadiest motherfucker I've ever seen. <gasps> is it gonna be classic dummy in the bed trick? I bet. Home Alone too, right? When when um he makes the, the bad guys think that there's adults in the in the room. It's his little heart. <laughs> That's so weird. Mm. Oh my god. The city looks so peaceful from This feels like John Hughes would have actually done this as a kid. Does that do you know what I mean? It feels like like too much of a specific for him to just make it up. Mm. 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 I really like Cameron. You want to get married? Me and my friends used to do that in middle school. Give me one good reason, why not? I'll give you two good reasons why not. My mother and my father. Very breakfast club too, right? Where they're having like very real discussions amidst like the punctuated comedy. How's that? The pol You're gonna call the police on me? Yes. Fine. As a matter of fact, I'll call them myself. <laughs> Ferris Bueller scares me. I just can't, I could never be his friend. A, you can never go too far. B, if I'm gonna get busted, it is not gonna be by a guy like that. Don't think twice. It's understanding that makes it possible for people like us to tolerate a person like yourself. <laughs> this scares me so much. What about when the real Mr. Froman comes? That used to worry me. Then I saw how Cameron's family functioned. Using the mirror to make eye contact That's with us, I love it. That's why he's sick all the time. It's cool. It really bothers him. 4,000 restaurants in the downtown area. I picked the one my father goes to. We're pinched for sure. No way, Cameron. Bold survive. Let's go. Let's surrender. Never. Yes, they're treating today like, like a mission. Son fate. Translation. 
game is up. Not him. A girl. <laughs> Foul territory. Guys, I think go for it in that inning. Do you realize if we played by the rules right now, we'd be in gym? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Cross cut back to school. This is what it feels like to stay home. Parks right in front of a hydrant. Takes a special kind of dude to do that. Save it, Ferris. Come down here. You can reach my parents at their places of business. Thank you for stopping by. <laughs> I appreciate your concern for... This motherfucker thought of everything. Star Wars music? Oh my... What? That's so awesome slash insane that that was what we just finished on the channel. Oh, I love when film refers to other film. They're so cultured. Cameron's in crisis, you guys. I'd be interested in somebody mapping Ferris's route around Chicago and letting me know if it's possible to hit up all these spots in a game. And I think it's not. But that's what makes it funny. What's over there? Ah. Oh my god, deeply buried nostalgic memory. The little rabbit's foot, remember? Don't you dare flirt with him. <laughs> Community rallies are all sick youth. Shut the f up. Stop it. Cameron Fry, this one's for you. What? You do it! Oh my god, do I love a musical number? This is everything I love. Oh, how you tore your dress. Oh my god, I love him. I love Ferris Bueller. What are you interested in? Nothing. Yes. What an arc. <laughs> wow. If you are an extra in this scene, comment below. Message me, DM me, email me. I want to talk to you. Oh, this is so cool. Such joy. Wow, wow. That is a production. That is a lot of extras. That is a lot of coordination. That is a lot of shots. All our best for speedy recovery, the English department. Christ. See if Ferris kills me. The triple take. What? I knew the hydrant was gonna come into play. The only people that have consequences in this film are anyone who's against Ferris. That was so quick. Cameron's gonna come around now though. He's like, mm, I have fun. I've experienced a change. <laughs> this is not a phony phone call. There is an intruder, male. She doesn't know what her principal looks like. Yeah, my, 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 my name's Bueller. How's your Look, brother? Look, it's real nice that you hope my brother's feeling better, but I'm in danger, okay? I, I am very it. cute. I, I am very alone. It. And that I have my father's gun and a scorching case of herpes. <laughs> How many miles did you say this thing had on it? 126 and halfway between three and four tenths. 200, 300. 3,000! It goes berserk. 
I heard that you were feeling ill. Headache, fever, and a chill. I came to help restore your pluck. Cause I'm the nurse who likes to... Camera? Blink if you understand me. You feeling any better, Cameron? <laughs> Cam, Cam. Oh, sh Cameron, come on, Cameron! Come on, wake up! What is that? Ferris Bueller, you're my hero. Charlie Mullen Jean? Wow, he looks like a bad Thank boy. Thank you, no, I'm straight. Drugs. I'm straight. Why are you here? Straight edge, probably. Why don't you put your thumb up your butt? Good idea. You could ditch. Yeah, I'd get caught. Right on, this is the lesson of the thing. You can have fun too. Somebody you should talk to. If you say Ferris Bueller, you lose a testicle. Oh, you know him. <laughs> Everybody knows the Ferris Bueller. Does that work if you run the tires backward? It's the best day of my life. God, I love high school movies. God damn it. I better check down the car. Is it adding to it? Huh. Well, I knew that, that wasn't a thing. A I can't stand him and I just got him fall. Who do you love? Karen, it's gonna fall and fly. No. no, 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 stop! I don't like destruction for the sake of destruction. I'm just tired of being afraid. Turn I can't off wait to the see car. the look on the bastard's face. No! What'd I do? <laughs> you killed the car. I'm dead. I'll take the heat for it. We'll wait for your father to come home, and when he gets here, I'll tell him that I did it. No. I'll take it. No, I'll take it. No. It's possible to stop Mr. Ferris Bueller, you know. No. I want it. I don't think it's possible to stop Ferris Bueller. <laughs> oh, by the way, I hope your son is feeling better. Tell him all the guys at the station here are pulling for him, hmm? <laughs> oh, my God, do I love a rumor. <laughs> Hi. Don't hi me, young lady. Charlie and Sheen. It's, it's Jean, but uh, a lot of a lot of guys call me Shauna. No one calls you Shauna, do they? He's gonna be just fine. Goosebumps. <laughs> the '80s soundtrack, a kiss. This is so fun. I have to go. Had a hard time telling that time. I was gonna take my commission and buy Ferris a car. <laughs> ah! Jeannie, what the hell are you doing? Are you trying to kill us? Run, run. God, look at this mess. Jeannie, help him out. Call her over. Yes. If you're against Ferris, you're done, you're done in this movie. Another speeding ticket, and I lost the Vermont. What's this? Principal. I got you, Ferris. It's none of your goddamn business what I do with my sick day. Hi. Thank you, Mr. Rooney, for driving him home. So. Uh. Was she lying about him being an intruder? Imagine someone as sick as Ferris trying to walk home from the hospital. <laughs> By the way, Mr. Rooney, you left your wallet on the kitchen floor. The wallet. How did I forget that? I hate myself. This is this is exactly how this has to end. All the flowers. Yeah. 
do you feel? 150% better, thank you. I have to graduate <laughs> in June. How'd you get to be so sweet? Mm, years of practice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I can love this. This is, this is genre defining. <laughs> get well. <laughs> oh, a Simple Minds poster. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Come on, bro. This is like the bus scene on 16 can in 16 Candles, don't you think? All right, enough of this scene. I'm, I'm over it, let's go. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I really like that. I think I thought I would be more apathetic towards it and I thought I'd be like, okay, great, fine movie. That is everything I really like. John Hughes really does it for me. I'm sure he really does it for a lot of people. I really like that. I love living in a world of heightened reality. I love a one day film because they're my favorite kinds of screenplays because you can really see the screenwriters having fun. The Star Wars music, I love a nod, I love a nod. Happens all in one day, I wrote so whimsical. The license plate's really funny. Okay, let's move on to the trivia. I'm also really interested in knowing what lineup in John Hughes' repertoire was this one because I saw nods to his works. So let's go there. Okay, it went Breakfast Club first, European Vacation, Weird Science, Pretty in Pink, then Ferris Bueller. Mm. 16 Candles, 84, Ferris Bueller, 86. I saw a lot of 16 Candles references. Tons of 16 Candles nods. I saw a lot of Breakfast Club nods where it would get kind of heady, not heady, it would get kind of heavy. Cameron is actually upset that his dad doesn't pay him any attention. And then it would get comedic and heavy and comedic and heavy. Cool, and then this was before pl Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, before Uncle Buck, and definitely before Home Alone. Ugh, f you, John Hughes. The script for Fer Ferris Bueller's Day Off took only six days to write. That sucks for me. To produce the desired drug addict effect for his role as the drug addict in the police station, Charlie Sheen stayed awake for more than 48 hours before the scene was shot. He looked bad, but I thought that was makeup. Good for him. Full method on that. Grace the secretary pretending to be Ed Rooney during the phone call from Cameron was improvised. She was pretty funny. The shot of Ferris playing the clarinet was done on the spot. Someone spotted the instrument as part of the set. Matthew Broderick said he could play it, which of course he couldn't. Ah! Mia Sarah says Matthew Broderick actually tickled her feet and knees to get her to laugh naturally in the taxi cab scene. Cameron's father's Ferrari wasn't a real Ferrari because it was too expensive to rent one. Three replicas were made using MG chassis, each with a fiberglass body. Okay. Edie McClurg, um, the secretary, told Vanity Fair magazine the character's hairdo should be from the 1960s because Grace felt she looked best in the 60s. Ah! John Hughes looked at her hairstyle the day she arrived on set and the first thing he says was, how many pencils do you think can fit in that hair? They tested it with one pencil, then two and three. So that was the origin of Grace's first scene in the movie in which she pulls several lost pencils out of her hair. That was really, really funny. In the film, Ferris and Cameron are supposed to be 18, Sloan 17, in reality, Matthew Braddock was 23, Alan Ruck was 29, and Mia Sarah was 18. Well, Alan Ruck, not only did he look young, which anybody, anybody could look young, um, he really captured the attitude of a high schooler. When Grace says, he's a righteous dude. They think he's a righteous dude. It was not in the original script. Edie McClurg ad-libbed it in her best Chicago accent. That was funny. Wow, interesting. Mia Sarah beat Molly Ringwald for the role of Sloane Peterson because according to John Hughes, she had elegance. According to Ringwald, John wouldn't let me do it. He said that wasn't that part wasn't big enough for me. Cool. The restaurant where Ferris and company go to eat is the same one Jake and Elwood terrorize in the Blues Brothers. And it's the same restaurant from, same, from St. Elmo's Fire. The school in the background when Sloan and Ed Rooney are standing outside is John Hughes' old high school. Mm, love. Ben Stein was exceptionally moved by the film, calling it the most life-affirming movie possibly of the entire post-war period. This is to comedies what Gone with the Wind is to epics, Stein added. It will never die because it responds to and calls forth such human emotions. I really did like this movie. I feel like it really just like scratched some sort of itch of like being in high school and like wanting to seize the day. One of the biggest things I'm always shocked about is how like we just go along with a high school schedule and you have zero autonomy over your time and your day. Like everyone is telling you where to be at all times. And taking a sick day is like kind of taking control over your life. It's like when you feel kind of adult, you're kind of like, no, today I wanna do what I wanna do. 
and like I think that's why I really like this movie because in high school you're just like craving that control over your day that you just don't get. Yes, okay, this talks about the license plates. Katie's is VCTN, Vacation, National Lampoon's Vacation 1983. Jeannie's is TBC, The Breakfast Club. Mom's is MM Mom, Mr. Mom. Rooney's 4FBDO is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Matthew Broderick improvised, never had one lesson. This is my other question. The parade scene took multiple days of filming. It was shot on two Saturdays in the heart of downtown Chicago. The first day was during a real parade and John got some very long shots. Then radio stations carried announcements inviting people to take part in a John Hughes movie. I said it in my reaction, I'll say it again. If you were part of this, comment below, I wanna to talk to you. Ferris and Sloan's kiss in front of Rooney was originally just a brief kiss, but was later edited into the long kiss scene in the film. How? You have to have that footage. They must have definitely made out. The bus scene that plays during the ending credits was a scene cut from the movie. It was meant to take place after Jeannie announced that she called the police and Rooney had to find a place to hide. This explains why the sky isn't dark and why a bus is taking students home at 6 p.m. Yeah. The final scene in the garage was shot in early fall, so each of the leaves on the trees outside had to be hand painted green every morning before shooting. In the shot, looking up from the wreck at the three friends, the yellow tree with the most of its upper leaves gone can be seen reflected in the window. John Hughes said he had Broderick in mind when he wrote the screenplay. He's the only actor who could pull off the role, calling him clever and charming. Poster for a simple mind song, Don't You Forget About Me on Ferris's Wall. Song was featured prominently in John Hughes' The Breakfast Club, 1985. So to answer my earlier question, Breakfast Club was first, then this. The text on the screen, when Ferris is explaining how to fake being sick, was added later because John Hughes thought the scene was too flat and not funny enough. So you've seen what I have to say. You heard what I have to say. You heard what I have to say about Ferris Bueller's Day Off, so now I wanna hear from you. What do you think of this film? Do you like it? Is it your favorite? Is it the worst? Is this your favorite John Hughes film? This might be like one of my top John Hughes films ever. But yeah, meet me in the comments below. Let's definitely, definitely talk about it. And I want to say thank you again to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to hit the link in my description box below for 83% off and three free months of Surfshark when you use my code Chanel and you can try it absolutely risk-free for 30 days. Thank you, Surfshark. And on that note, I'm gonna go eat dinner. <laughs>